This video I'm going to talk about Team Arc through the ages. Team Arc is the general sort of like referees in the game of light between the Team Light and Team Dark strategies that unify into a greater good. So architecturally you can speak, you can think about this as two Venn circles, the overlapping, this is Team Light, this is Team Dark, and the greater good is the one that is common or a mixture of both of them that leads to the greater good or the lesser good. We tend to think of this in Christian philosophies like Jesus versus Satan, heaven versus hell. All the reality is that some of the stuff is a little bit more complicated in our world. Um, in the end, the goal is for unification, that we are one sea of unity. We have to work together. Um, so in historical stuff, we could see these characters as sort of the Greek, the, the two become one. Originally, some of the oldest like uh, deities were two-headed male and female in one and as we became more evolved like if you look backwards like 150,000 years ago when Adam and Eve first came around part of the goal was to separate because it was too complicated to have these two different strategies in one person that didn't know who they were on either side so gender and procreation became part of the game of life as a way of causing it not to go on unduly long. If people get too powerful or too unfortunate, they die and they have a chance to get reborn. Jesus came around and ended that cycle of reincarnation. He was one of the first archangels, and he's symbolically represented in this picture, which he is, the Christ consciousness is the crown. He is, the Christ consciousness unifies Jesus and Satan. Um, and that Satan, we are on the bottom level of the bottomless pit, um, that's kind of the hidden trick, why some of the stuff is unnecessary, meaning everything down here is all darkness. And it looks like it's light. It's not. It looks like it's material-oriented. It's not. So this is the role that the sphinxes and, and the seraphim in the Christian face came in as uh, sort of referees and guides on the path. If you look backwards, you can find them in pretty much every historical period. They were tra traditionally known as sphinxes. So you can think of Greece, Egypt, Eustration, um, pretty much all the same features. They all map, like this is the seraphim, to the same sort of core concepts. This is the kind of the arc view, essentially. What is up? What is down? Using two witnesses. And this is also the basis for why we have face. We have to have two eyes to get 3D perspective. We have a nose, which kind of directs the point forward and the inner, uh, I mean, the the connective tissue between our left hemisphere and our right hemisphere, which indicates the action to take. That decision, based on our free will choices, can lead to down or up, which is the consequences of free will, and being in a labyrinth. We just chose wrong so many times. Over time, these relationships and these labeling identification ends up building the tree of knowledge. And if it's gone the right way, it'll go up towards unification, which is returning back to that sea of unity, where we are all one. Uh, for one greater good. If we don't, we go down to the bottomless pit, which you see here is a dead end. There's no place you can go. And we can see this even in our own lives. Like, you know, you have infinity mirrors, you have, there's an app and there's a device. So like rather than, you know, eventually when you start having this device tell you who you are, it's no different than looking in the mirror and expecting that to be just who you are by looking at what you can see in the mirror rather than what is internally to you. So I've met people who look physically great who are, have cancer, who have you know d various diseases, so appearances can be deceiving, which is why we have to look at our true form and discernment and internal vision like spiritual sight is most important. Um, you can think of this as a compass for the greatest good. You have to understand what is looks what looks are and what actually is and what the true differences are to know if you're going up or going down, forward or backwards. Often this requires both strategies. You need to have the male and female, good and bad, dark and light, um, possible and impossible sort of perspectives to figure it out. Functionally, spiritually speaking, it acts as a compass and a level uh, across for society and internally to us. And the difference between what is good and what is bad can be modeled like a plane. Ideally, you want to have a plane level and flying stably. This is the least fuel efficient, I mean, least uh, fuel expenditure, the fastest and the safest. Often we are kind of in a stall pattern or a high friction path. So we have this delta between what we're currently doing, which is stalling out and spending much money. And like Icarus, sometimes it just crashes and horribly burns. And the path that would be the most slipstreamed smooth.